thief is about to steal or die trying. Outside the victim's window, a gentle rain shower begins to fall. Seems the roof has sprung a leak. False alarm. But the sword is gone. The novice has passed the test and joins an invisible army, warriors of the night. Central Japan, the year is 1562. The warlord of this castle has taken hostage the wife and son of a rival, Tokugawa Iyasu. To get them back, Iyasu needs hostages of his own. The castle's defenders suspect an attack, but feel secure. Yasu looks to the key that will unlock the gates, the ninja. In Yasu's day, hundreds of warlords and thousands of samurai fight for power in Japan. For four centuries, they have been locked in warfare. Far from the din of battle, the most powerful warlords live in luxury. Protected by armies of samurai, soldiers prepared to die for their masters. For the samurai, warfare is open, regimented, and honorable. But another kind of warrior stalks Japan. The ninja. Cunning, courageous, and cutthroat. A coded message has been left in the forest. A warlord called Iyasu is willing to pay for the skills of a ninja. The ninja replies, I will come. Ninjutsu, the art of the ninja, has thrived in Japan for centuries. Developed from the teachings of Chinese strategists like the great Sun Tzu, it found eager students among Buddhist monks in Japan. To protect their temples, legend has it that the gentle monks taught others to do their fighting. Simple peasants became their protectors. Soon the protectors became warriors for hire. In the neighboring provinces of Iga and Koga, ninjutsu took root. Mountain peaks and valley walls hid farmers by day, ninja by night. In these hills and forests, in small bands or alone, the ninja thrived. Word of their talents has traveled far beyond their sanctuary and reached men like Lord Iyasu.
The ninja he has summoned are about to be put to the test. The skills that Iyasu requires are sold for money, but they were first paid for in years of sweat and pain. From a skilled master, a son or daughter learns the secrets of the ninja. Weapons of attack, tools of siege. These secrets are a rich brew, eagerly drunk drop by drop. Such treasures are handled like jewels, lose them and die. One ninja from Koga wrote to his master, These writings on ninjutsu entrusted to me by you will never be shown to others. If by any chance I should disobey, then I must receive the punishment of heaven. Lessons are grueling. Every move is rehearsed precisely and endlessly. All performed as silently as possible. Is the victim really asleep? Or only pretending? Luring the ninja into a trap? This time, it's only a game. One day, a matter of life or death. As the young ninja grows, her lessons become more deadly. The shaken, the throwing star, tiny but deadly. To master cold steel, she practices with a wooden pipe. The sword itself would forgive no mistake. Nature herself becomes an accomplice. Which creatures cause panic when flung at an enemy? How a box of crickets can camouflage sounds? Which plants to use to treat a wound? The novice's first assignment? Assassination. Using three principles of ninjutsu. First, the principle of heaven. Time the attack with care. Months go by before the moment to strike arrives. Second, the principle of Earth. Find the enemy's weak spot. The warlord visits his garden each morning to smell the flowers. Last, the principle of mankind. Manipulating how men behave. The next day, when the Lord bends to sniff the blossoms, he collapses and dies. Mixed with the pollen is poison dust. Lord Yasu's call for help is answered by the ninja. Somewhere a warlord holds Yasu's wife and son captive. To get them back, Iyasu will seize the warlord's sons. The enemy's castle is too strong to attack. The ninja must slip inside and slip out, undetected. If caught, a ninja must safeguard his secrets by taking his own life. A ninja's life depends on secrecy. If the disguise of a farmer or laborer won't do, a ninja chooses that of a priest. 
a minstrel, a merchant, or a wife. The ninja dresses in brown or black and blends into the darkness. Beneath she may wear a layer of light armor. The cloth that hides her face has a more vital use. Impregnated with antiseptic, it can become a bandage. Principles of warfare, the ninja set out to find the warlord's weak spot. His walls are scaled. explored, unseen, unheard. His intruders leave as quietly as they came. They have gotten what they came for and lay their plan. are as silent as the ninja. The sword is the strongest of its day. The blade is the sharpest ever known. Oiled and polished till it glistens, it is a testament to the skill of two craftsmen, the swordsmith and the assassin. In the hands of a master, it can kill with one blow. Other tools of their trade are pulled from hiding. Grappling irons, iron knuckles, claws. The guards are wary yet unaware, as the ninja once more crossed the moat. Again, they are unheard, unseen. No one speaks, in stark contrast to the samurai, who proudly shouts his name when he wades into battle. The ninja works in silence.
breach the inner courtyard, still undetected. Mysteriously, a fire breaks up. The garrison is alarmed and distracted. In the confusion, the ninja strike. stun their victims with poison powder and spirit them away. Where the ninja had been, there is darkness. By dawn, the castle is ablaze. And Lord Iyasu has his hostages to trade. The ninja have saved his family. One day, they will save his life. Late in the 16th century, Japan is still racked by civil war. In 1581, the province of Iga, sanctuary of the ninja, is attacked from all sides. The land is devastated, the people slaughtered, including many of the ninja. The survivors escape to join their old employer, Iyasu. Lord Iyasu himself is overwhelmed and must flee, guarded by the ninja. They bundle him aboard a ship and hide him among the cargo. His pursuers search for him with their swords. One blade pierces his thigh, but he makes no sound. As it's withdrawn, he wipes it clean of his blood. The ship sails and Iyasu is free. Iyasu rewards the ninja well by taking 300 into his service. A wise move. Those employed by him will not be used against him. To deter the ninja who work for his enemies, Iyasu crafts defenses, hidden doors, false stairs, and the nightingale floorboard, which sings at the slightest step. Warriors of the night serve Iyasu well. So well that within a decade, all of Japan comes under his rule. In 1590, he and his family form the Tokugawa Shogunate, or dictatorship, in Edo, a tiny town later called Tokyo. The nation of Japan is born. For 250 years, the Tokugawa reigned in relative peace. They no longer require the services of the ninja. Some founded schools of ninjutsu and taught the martial arts. Some became bodyguards. A few became bandits. The masters of invisible warfare disappeared slowly absorbed into time and legend and the night. In the 
year 621, China was ruled by chaos. Warlord fought warlord. No one was safe, not even the emperor. His estates were seized, his subjects murdered, and his son taken hostage. A peasant found the prince's imperial seal and took it to a monastery nearby. The monks resolved to find this wicked warlord and rescue the emperor's son. For despite their peaceful manner, they knew a hundred ways to kill a man. They were the Shaolin, masters of the deadly art of Kung Fu. At the foot of the Songshan Mountains in central China lies a holy temple where monks learn to kill. In the 7th century, the Shaolin Monastery became known for the hardest training of mind and body ever devised. A monk practiced every day, without fail, in rain or heat or snow. At day's end, he would be bruised and bleeding. In time, his fists became as hard as iron. His body could bear the blows of a staff without flinching. He could kill a man with the palm of his hand. This monastery housed a paradox, pacifists who had mastered Kung Fu. Here, the martial arts the monks studied were in harmony with their faith. To follow the Buddhist path of compassion, one must root out evil. Many families sent their sons to the Buddhist monastery to become learned monks and masters of Kung Fu. One boy who appeared at the monk's door was Pu Sheng. But it was not easy to gain entrance. Choosing a master involved showing a measure of great respect, often to the point of begging while on one's knees. If a candidate showed promise, he would be allowed to stay for a time. The masters agreed that Pu Sheng possessed the proper spirit for a warrior monk. Only when the abbot deemed that one had the necessary qualifications to be admitted to those elite ranks would the initiation ceremony be performed, complete with shaving of the head and swearing of an oath in obedience to one's master. The Shaolin Monastery was built in 495 AD beneath the Songshan Mountains in what would become Hunan Province. Legend traces the origins of these warrior monks to the year 527 when a monk named Da Mo traveled from India to Shaolin. Darmo's teaching was revolutionary. Rejecting the Buddhist scriptures as the way to enlightenment, he advocated discipline and dedication through meditation. Thus could one see with a clear heart one's true nature. His approach became known as Zen. A special tradition outside the scriptures. Not to depend on books or letters to point directly to the heart of man, to see one's own true nature, and become Buddha. Buddhism teaches that suffering is caused by desire. Zen teaches one to empty the mind of desire. In his quest for enlightenment, Da Mo went to live in a cave in the mountains above the monastery. 
For nine years, he dwelt there in solitary meditation. During this time, to relieve fatigue, he took up daily exercise. Gradually, the techniques he developed, the choreographed movements and deep breathing, evolved into Shaolin Gong Fu, learned skill, or Kung Fu. Following his example, all the monks of Shaolin soon undertook ritual exercise. Centuries of training would leave their mark. Having been accepted into the temple, Pu Sheng began his long apprenticeship by swearing to the three rules and five disciplines of the Shaolin Temple. Thou shalt worship the Buddhist idols. Thou shalt believe in the Buddhist law. Thou shalt respect your masters and fellow disciples. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not indulge in debauchery. Thou shalt not lie, and thou shalt not drink. <laughs> 